Hello Joe, welcome to Blockheads. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. So I'm Joe Bergmans. I've been collecting Lego for 36 years. Um, so these three items are mine. So the center is the Jack Lantern. So basically a different kind of design that incorporates planes of parabolas stacked on top of each other to give you a really good curvature. So it's a nice face in the front with the LED going, so it looks like a candle. And then you got the back in the back there, that's the butt end. Um, the lid comes off. Actually, at first, I engineered the lid to uh, have these air holes to put a candle in there, but as you can see, I melted it like a goofus. So sometimes you got to think about things like that. Don't put a real candle in it, otherwise you will melt your Legos like I did. But the LED light works fantastic. So the pumpkin, that took about three days, uh, design and building. Uh, the candy, which I think really accents it. Actually, other people told me it did, and I agree with them. Uh, the candy took about a day to build. So you've got, you know, your Reese's, Milk Duds, Three Musketeer, Almond Joy, Hard Candy. First crack at Hershey's before I got enough brown. Then the actual Hershey bar. Uh, sweet Tarts, uh, Kit Kat, Candy Corn, Milky Way, Butterfinger, and M&M's. Plain. That's all that. Uh, this guy is currently three years old. Uh, over here, this guy basically is the Imperial Gunboat, which is made by the same company as the Shuttle Tidarium from the Jedi movie, Episode 6. Uh, it was featured in a game, the TIE Fighter game from, I think, 95. It basically flies around, chases X-Wings and Y-Wings, and blows them up. Proton torpedoes, so it destroys big capital ships, too. Now, in the game, they never showed how this would actually physically be stored or landed. They usually launched from a capital ship, but I incorporated a folding wing system similar to what the shuttle Tidarium would do. Remember, the same company makes this. It's Cygnus Corporation. This is called the Star Wing. And to make sure the wings stay up, these little guys pull out from the side and keep them steady. And there's actually a retractable landing gear, a forward and two rear. You can basically access a hatch here and push down the rear landing gear to make sure they come out. This actually, this stand is kind of funny too. It was actually made by employees of the Smithsonian who thought they'd sell a bunch on eBay. Unfortunately, I was the only one that put in a bid, so I got it. I've had this for about 15 years. This model is actually 14 years old right now. So it was about when the game was released. This last model here, and I lament because I haven't had enough time to make more models. I've actually been trying to spend time inventorying all of my parts in Excel so I can do big project work. But this right here is the Eucadian Warhawk from the PlayStation 3 Warhawk game, which came out in 2007. So if any of you guys play that game or have older folks that you know to play that game, basically you can jump in a plane, fly around, and you can drop a cluster bomb on people or hit them with heavy missiles or the swarm missile or the 30 millimeter gun. Now, the plane, when I try to build something, I try to make things anatomically correct. So the plane holds two people, just like this. They've got access, all right? As the plane flies around, the ailerons can bend, unfortunately, only down. But all four of the ailerons do move, all right? Now, some of you may know if you've ever seen this in the game, it has two modes. It flies very fast and it has a hover mode like a helicopter. So when it goes into hover mode, the wings actually fold out and you can hover and you can orbit like a helicopter, but the physics that's happening is you're hovering, these intake jets are actually blasting down to give you hover mode but then in the back, you actually have two sets of engine jets. These two outboards are your primary thrust. These two inboards actually are your hover, and they do bend down, just like the actual one would. And when you go back to flight mode, of course, they retract back. Now, when you physically land, you have to land in hover mode, and it lands on a three-point system. So there is a retractable landing gear here which actually just broke on me, but basically the landing gear comes out and sits like this and it can rest down on three points. 
And the reason it can rest on three points, fortunately I did a redesign. And what's really critical here from a building standpoint is this looks pretty good because there are so few visible studs. A lot of people try to do uh, studless work or minimal studs as much as possible. I like to do that myself to give a little bit more realism. But in order to make the plane looks, look as it does, you've got to flatten out the wings and kind of build perpendicularly outward, right? Which means you have to meld two directions. You have to take this plate and integrate it with basically these special stud pieces in a perpendicular fashion, but you have to line them up in such a way that they mate either with the tubes or in between them and you have very little margin for error. So you can actually see here, there's a very slight gap where my fingernail is, but it's very small. Before I redesigned this just the other night, that gap was probably about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a lot. So these are the kinds of engineering challenges you have to think about all the time. For example, with this, with the pumpkin, if I, if I just built the pumpkin brick-wise, just layers of bricks, it would be taller, a little thinner, and it wouldn't look that great. But if you build it in single stud height, perpendicular planes stacked on each other and facing forward, you now have the resolution to do the full face and everything else. So it's a big difference in how you approach any type of engineering problem, no matter what it is. There's very rarely ever one single solution for an engineering problem. There's usually several, and Legos are a fantastic way to explore different ones. Legos are great because you have a specific resolution to play with, the blocks, as opposed to if you scratch build something from, you know, cardboard and masking tape where you have to measure every single line and put things together really carefully. With Legos, you have a lot of freedom to just use the parts that you have and put them together in many different ways. So that's why Lego is so great. Well, thank you so much for your thank time, you Joe. Much.